I am now pleased to present our next presenter for the Nonprofit of the Year, Rochelle Naroyan. Hi, my name is Rochelle Naroyan. I'm on the Santa Cruz City Council. You've given a politician a mic, which is very dangerous. Uh, we either are gonna congratulate everyone we've ever met, uh, talk a lot, and talk about some really depressing crap. So I'll try, not, I'll try to do all three things very quickly. So I just wanna say thank you, Santa Cruz community. It's a joy to be a representative of an amazing group of people who are creative and passionate about their community. And that's what this next award is about. Homelessness is a huge issue in our community. And I have to say, it's probably the most frustrating issue that we try to grapple with in the city because we all want the same thing. We all have different opinions on how we're going to solve it. And it feels like it's an insurmountable problem sometimes. But the bottom line, everybody wants there to be less homelessness. So while we're having these really hard discussions, we all have the same goal, and that's something to remember. And in the city of Santa Cruz, we have one of the highest homeless rates in the country per capita. And I think that doesn't surprise a lot of people in this room. But what might surprise a lot of you is we have one of the largest unsheltered rates of homelessness. It means that we don't have a lot of people who live here in Santa Cruz in shelters, couch surfing. Their roof is the sky or a tent. And one day, the person who's about to win this award on behalf of the Warming Center came to me and explained to me what his goals were and that he wanted less people to be out in the cold, to die due to exposure, or to, or to have to exist with the sky as their, their roof during really bad weather. I was skeptical. It was a model that had never been tried before. Um, and it was really grassroots. It was being done on a shoestring budget. It wasn't being done with any support from local government in terms of funding. There were those of us who did champion the cause eventually. We, we, he won us over. And one night I had the opportunity to go and look at the warming center in action. And it was run like a well-oiled machine. People could come in at any time during the night. And the reason why they came to a warming center instead of the um, shelter that we have, well, there's a winter shelter here in Santa Cruz. It goes from late fall into early spring. It operates every evening, but it's only 100 spaces. And there's a lot of hoops that one needs to jump through to be able to participate. It's supported by all four cities in the county. But the warming center opens up when it gets below a certain temperature where none of us would want to even be outside. And it opens when the weather is really nasty. And it provides more spaces for the people who try to subsist in Santa Cruz without a home. And so I am very, very proud um, to be the person to be able to present this award tonight to Brent Adams and the Warming Center, Nonprofit of the Year. This was not handed to me on my way up, so now I'm going to officially hand it to Brent. Congratulations, Thank Brent. You. Thank you, sweetie. Good job. Thank you. Rochelle was really kind um, because we're kind of a renegade program. I've been a re uh, renegade in Santa Cruz. I mean, Google me, Brent Adams, you'll see. I mean, what was it, the Russian hack? I think it worked. Yuri, I owe you one. Thank you. Uh, but you got it right, whoever voted for us. Um, warming Center is really uh, uh, changing minds, making uh, miracles. Uh, Warming Center is a bit of a renegade program. As Rochelle said, it doesn't get any government funding. It's all volunteer, all community supported. I really wanna thank you who have donated for, to the Warming Center because it's really been the Santa Cruz community that has come forth. Uh, we had a donation barrel for blankets uh, and coats over at uh, uh, st uh, Staff of Life and, uh, and also uh, uh, Maria Tanner uh, and, and their uh, program, they've given us, uh, really, we gave away thousands of blankets and coats just besides the uh, staffing the warming center. I really want to thank, it's all about the volunteers, uh, especially Woo! Nancy Crusoe. I want to thank Nancy Crusoe. In fact, in fact, if you're a volunteer of the warming center, please stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, 
Also, I want to thank Stacy Falls. Uh, she's over here, uh, and also Gail Williamson. They really uh, helped helped underwrite and help us and get, get us going. Um, see, I'm going to forget some stuff. But it's really uh, the churches. I mean, we. I mean, imagine knocking on a door on the church doors or any uh, local program. Say, can we have 60 to 100 people sleeping on your floor tonight? People normally sleep outside. It was kind of a miracle that any of them that allowed us to, to do that at all. And that's Peace United Church up on High Street, Quaker Meeting House, and also Calvary Episcopal. They took the big risk and let us, uh, yeah. They do it for free, free of charge. We don't pay them anything, and we have not let them down. We have really honored those relationships. Uh, we haven't had to call the police department one time at all because of the way uh, that we really are, uh, you know, enforcing the rules and keeping things clean and really keeping this uh, uh, really responsible program. Uh, and I just want to uh, say, I want to encourage everybody to help uh, support Warming Center. It's really an honor for me to advocate for Warming Center. Uh, just imagine uh, hundreds of people, or say 60, sometimes we have 85 people sleeping in, people who normally sleep outside. Imagine if you, even if you or I were to sleep at the Warming Center in the sort of grid-like pattern that we people, put people in, we would have a hard time getting to people to sleep. But imagine if you have claustrophobic issues from sleeping outside for years or you sleep in a doorway to come in. And it's really been a miracle. I mean, just the sound of 60 people snoring at night who normally sleep outside will bring tears to your eyes, I tell you. <clears throat> So uh, we've, so as Rochelle mentioned, there's there are other shelters in town, and we came into being, and I want to talk about that too much, but because of maybe some of the inadequacies of some of the other shelters, we we're kind of a boutique style. We want to make people feel good. We serve soup all night long, which is, becomes kind of a sedative. Very clean blankets. You put them to your nose and feel good about the uh, the, the the kind of a detergent fabric smell. Uh, uh, cl uh, comfy uh, floor pads. Um, let's see, uh, and uh, we believe that this could be a model for lots of other programs. Homelessness is very complex. It doesn't feel good. And any time we're meant to feel good about a homeless uh, a program, I, I, we should be a little uh, a bit suspicious of it. Uh, but really a program like this that, that is truly community supported uh, and then comes from the ground up, um, we could do all kinds of things. And I, I just got done uh, touring the West Coast uh, all spring and summer. I'm shooting a film about, docu about homelessness, and I've seen 40 cities. I interviewed 1,000 people, and I've seen programs out there that in this Trump era where funding is going to go away, they've defunded the shelters. Uh, ha housing first is a great idea, but we're just not going to house everybody. I'm sorry to say, you, you know what rent's like here. Uh, so we really could uh, 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 build some programs in Santa Cruz. So we're starting something called the Santa Cruz Coalition on Homelessness. And I all want you to go to Facebook, look at that, Santa Cruz Coalition on Homelessness. On May 8th, we're meeting at Loudon Nelson at 7 o'clock to start talking about some of the solutions. So thank you for supporting Warming Center and, and, and all the volunteers. Thank you. Thank you.